All right, everyone. Bless Sabbath, Most High, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless us all. So, all right. Let's go to. Uh, let's start here. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha, chapter four. Ecclesiasticus, chapter four. In the Apocrypha. Let's start from verse uh, 11. So as we've been reading the history in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, as uh, the brother, our brother Paul was bringing out in the scriptures, back during the time of the apostles to the Israelites in Corinth, it's edifying for all of us. So uh, the role working through that brother was going into the history of Israel and dealing in you know, lusting. And in particular, last time we read in Exodus 32 about when Israel committed idolatry. And one thing we kept, you know, seeing as we were going through the history there is that Israel refused to submit themselves to the Most High. They say they refused to humble themselves and submit themselves to the wisdom of the Most High. So let's deal with some scriptures pertaining to that. How the Most High in the scriptures exhorts us to submit to wisdom, meaning the Holy Spirit. So let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And let's read from uh, verse 11. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha chapter 4 verse 11. So it says, Wisdom exalteth her children. See, so when we seek the wisdom of the Most High, then wisdom will exalt her children. See, wisdom exalts us. The wisdom of the Most High in Christ in the form of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the living water, <laughs> that exalts her children. See, we have to be the children of wisdom. And lay of hold on them that what? Seek her. See? So wisdom lays hold, right, on those that what? Seek her. See? So we have to be about what? Seeking, desiring the wisdom of the Most High. He that loveth her, loveth what? Life. So it's referring to wisdom as in like in a figure of speech, as a her. But let's be clear that the wisdom that comes from above is not a feminine spirit. Okay. So it's just a figure of speech. And speaking of wisdom as something that's to be what desired and when we desire wisdom he that loveth her he that loveth wisdom loveth his life that, won't, that means that we are tending our life he that loveth her loveth life and when we love wisdom that means we love life itself we love life when our life meaning life in, in the word of God not loving our life in worldliness, sin, the pleasure of sin, which is for a season. So it says, and they that seek her early shall be filled with what? Joy, see? So the inner joy, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit, if we seek the Most High's wisdom early, while it is called today, making haste, see? Seeking the Most High's wisdom early, while it's called today we're going to be filled with what? that inner joy from the Most High's wisdom he that holdeth her fast shall inherit what? glory See, so when we hold to wisdom and we don't let go what's the blessing in the end? if we endure to the end 
is telling us. Glory. Glory. Immortality. Crown of life. And wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will what? Bless. See? So wherever wisdom enters, the Most High going to bless that man in his deeds. Because the Most High's wisdom is dealing with what? The Holy Spirit. The comfort, the spirit of truth, the word of the Most High, the Most High's commandments, the scriptures. Verse 14. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. So we are a servant of wisdom. In turn, we're what? Serving and ministering unto who? The Most High. And then that love her, the Lord doth love. See, so when we love wisdom, the Most High loves that within us. He loves us. So we're supposed to love wisdom. We're supposed to love instruction. We're supposed to love the Word of God, His commandments. We're supposed to love that. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall what? Judge the nations. <laughs> so, those that love and seek and desire and serve wisdom and give ear unto wisdom shall be risen up to what? To be a judge of nations. That's some power right there. To discern according to the word of God and bring forth righteous judgment. That's how powerful the Most High working through us, through his wisdom, will exalt us in due time. So, uh, we're, so we're at Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 4, and verse 15. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, Chapter 4, verse 15. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge nations. That's powerful. So that's, de that's dealing on a high level for the most high to raise up man to be a judge. Then it says, And he that attendeth unto her shall dwell what securely securely so where's our safety how do we how do we dwell securely how do we dwell in safety how do we dwell safely where the most i got a hedge of protection around us when we are attending what wisdom seeking wisdom praying for wisdom praying for discernment Praying for understanding. That's that's the beauty of wisdom. The most high's wisdom. We'll dwell what? Securely. Safely. Nothing evil shall touch us. That's how wisdom protects us. The most high in Christ's wisdom. So now we're at Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 16. If a man commit himself unto her, see, again, it's Referring to wisdom as a her, as a what? A figure of speech. Commitment unto her. Because there's a commitment when it comes to wisdom. Just like a man and his wife. There's a commitment, right? Okay. He shall what? Inherit her. If we commit ourselves to wisdom, we're going to inherit. We're going to be the inheritors of wisdom. And his generation shall hold her in what? Possession. See? So when man has that wisdom in his possession, that generation will hold her in what? And his generation shall hold her in possession. So again, we're dealing with wisdom. And it's being spoken of in the sense of, you know, in, a, in the sense of a figure of speech. She desiring wisdom. So now we're at Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 17. So again, we're dealing with what? Submission to wisdom. The wisdom of the Most High. 
the before before we read this next verse, I want to read this. Let's go to the ninth chapter of Wisdom of Solomon. And then we'll get this. Go to Wisdom of Solomon. So we're in the Apocrypha still. So we're going to the Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter Nine. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine. And verse to get right to the point, verse seventeen. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter nine, verse seventeen. And thy counsel, meaning the Most High's counsel, his mind, his thoughts, his will, his ways, who have known? And thy counsel, who has known? Except thou give what? Wisdom. See? The Most High has to give us wisdom for us to be able to discern now, to begin to discern what is the counsel of, of God? What is, what is his will? We need wisdom. And send thy what? Holy Spirit from what? Above. So it's referencing wisdom as what? The Holy Spirit. That comes from where? Above. So whose throne is in heaven? The Most High God, the, the Heavenly Father. So that's showing us when we were reading about wisdom and it, it kept mentioning she, she, it's a figure of speech. That we understand is what? The ho Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God, the Holy, it is what? The Holy Spirit that comes from where? Above. So in heaven we have the Most High, right? And according to the scriptures, like Mark 16, 19, Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father. So that's where wisdom comes from. It comes from the Most High in Christ. In the form of what? The Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. Remember when Christ taught Nicodemus, unless a man be born again, meaning born from above, he shall not see the kingdom of God. What was Christ teaching Nicodemus? That there's a, a rebirth that has to take place within us that comes from what? Above, not from within. Just because a man born on this earth learns he's an Israelite, learns the commandments, wears his fringes blue border, follows the dietary laws, keep the commandments. That it don't stop there. Matter of fact, it starts with what? Repenting from our sins. <laughs> like Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, that you may receive what? The gift of the what? The Holy Spirit. So he was saying that, Peter, that is, to the people of Israel that were already in Jerusalem, keeping the Most High's commandments. The Lord taught Nicodemus, a man that was raised in the law of Moses, a master teacher in Israel, that he has to be born again. Nicodemus could have said, well, look, I keep the commandments. I, I'm, I know I'm an Israelite. I know the Hebrew. <laughs> Christ said, unless a man be born again. That, that was a powerful message for Nicodemus because he's a, a master teacher in Israel and he has to be born again. Yeah, we all do. We have to be born from where? Above. So just knowing and quoting scriptures, that's not good enough. We need There's a rebirth that has to take place from above. And it begins with us humbling ourselves, submitting ourselves to the Most High, repenting from sin, including Nicodemus, and any other, any other man, woman during his time, the apostles time, our time. Humbling ourselves, repenting, get in that water, confess our sins, and begin our new life in Christ. Because by the spiritual rebirth that takes place within us, what happens? Let's read verse 18. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 18. For so, meaning through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, 
For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were what? Were formed, meaning changed. See, how, do, how, how were men in the past, men and women of the past, how did they change? By submitting themselves to wisdom. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. See, we have to be taught the things that are pleasing unto the Most High. By, through what? Through wisdom, the Most High's wisdom, His mind, His counsel, His thoughts. And how do we obtain that? Wisdom? Through humility, through faith, submission. That's how we receive wisdom, the Holy Spirit. And were saved through wisdom. So men and women of the past were saved from their sins through wisdom. The wisdom of the Most High Christ. The Holy Spirit. The, the, the word of the Most High. The wisdom of His commandments. That's how men were what? Saved. They were saved through wisdom. So that's what, we, that's what we're reading about in Ecclesiastes chapter 4. So let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. So back to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. So now let's read about this wisdom. When we truly submit ourselves to wisdom, that is. Because sometimes just knowing scripture, that, that's not good enough. Even being here, you know, it, it, we have to be here, we have to be about these scriptures truly, sincerely, like, I'm going to bow down to this wisdom. I'm a humble, I'm, I'm going to commit myself to her. Like we read in Ecclesiastes 4. I'm, I'm going to submit myself to wisdom. So now let's read the 17th verse. Because now we get into an important aspect. Because remember we were reading the wisdom of Solomon 9. It was through wisdom that men, men were what? Reformed. And men were taught what? The things that are pleasing unto her. And then it spoke about how we were saved through wisdom. We're saved through Christ. So let's read this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by what? Crooked ways. So at first wisdom will walk with us in a path of what? Twists and turns. A lot of twists and turns, right? When we first, when we, when we truly about what? Submitting ourselves to the wisdom of the Most High. To deny ourselves and submit to the Most High. Most High going to take us for what? He's going to take us for a ride. Wisdom going to take us for a ride. And in this path, guess what? You're going to go this way, that way. A lot of twists and turns. It's like on a journey that we don't know what's next. Diverse temptations. So it is going into the different trials of our faith. So wisdom will lead us along a path of what? Of twists and turns. And it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Till we learn to submit ourselves, then the yoke becomes easy and the burden light. But at first, because there's so much within ourselves that we have to change, because we have to be what? Reformed. <laughs> we have to be what? Taught, meaning retaught. So that requires what? The faith and humility of a child. To be willing to be what? Taught. We have to be willing to be taught of the Most High. That means the man in the mirror, he has to see the biggest obstacle <laughs> and his life is going to be himself getting in the way of that submission to the Most High's wisdom. So let's read that again. Uh, a 
Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verse 17 for at the first she will walk with him by what so, so uh, what, what's a crooked path not straight. it's not straight right it's, it's going right it's going left it's crooked it's twists and turns you gotta have your ups and downs it's not straight see for at the first she will walk with him by what? Crooked paths. So that we that wisdom of the Most High leads us along difficult paths. So in the beginning, wisdom and its and its paths will bring what? Let's find out. Let's find out. And bring fear and dread upon him. <laughs> That's why, uh, you know. When we truly going to submit ourselves, because when is it when we are truly going to submit ourselves to wisdom? The day we repent. The day we get, we get baptized. That water baptism is symbolic of the death and burial of the old man and the what? Rising of the new. Right? And we'd expect temptation to come what? Immediately, right? Remember when the Lord was baptized? It said immediately he was led of the spirit to be tempted of the devil. If we have to partake in the sufferings of Christ, then we have to know whatever the Lord went through, we don't go through in this walk. So we have to be prepared. So let's read that again. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring what upon him? Fear and dread upon him. And torment her with her what? discipline see that's why the fear and the torment and, the, and dread is there why because we're walking a path that we're not what used to and we don't know what's next see before Christ we there was no day we do whatever we want to do in life we think behave say walk and do whatever we want to because that's the way that we're taught in this world to be <laughs> that the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that don't believe in the Most High Christ to believe that you are your own God that when a man is not going to humble himself and submit himself to the wisdom of the Most High at first that wisdom walks with us in a path of twists and turns wisdom leads us into along a, a difficult paths we're going to go through bouts of fear and dread. Fear and dread is going to come upon us. Wisdom will make us so afraid in the beginning that what? We're going to think that what? We can't go on. That's what happens a lot of times with brothers and sisters. They, I can't do this no more. It's too hard. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. See, that's that fear because when we're saying that, what does that mean? We're not enduring, right? In the commandments, in the word. We're being tried, right? By her laws, by the commandments of God. But we're what? It's, 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 it's that, that, that fear and dread and torment of, of the Most High's wisdom. The discipline that wisdom demands is going to be what? Difficult. Because we're not used to discipline. We're not used to wisdom. We're used to leaning upon our own understanding. That's what we're used to. So now I gotta humble myself. Now I have to be patient. I have to be long suffering. I gotta endure patiently and keeping these commandments, although I'm being provoked. The old man, what? He feed into the flesh and act accordingly. The new creature in Christ now has to what? Bear. Bear temptations and trials. Endure it. And when the Most High gives us the wisdom that we need, as, he's, as, as this wisdom is leading us along these difficult paths, if we're not spiritually minded, it's going to, that fear and dread and, and torment of, of that discipline 
might be, be you know, it's gonna feel like, oh, I, I can't do it. This ain't gonna try to get on all minds to just call it quits. It was easier. Your life was easier before you started learning this wisdom. Why do you make life, why you gotta keep the Sabbath? Why you gotta do this? And why the dietary, Satan get in our mind. Fellowship. So, Satan try to, cause Satan has his element in this whole thing here. He trying to draw us away from the most high, from that discipline. Let's read it again. For at the first ye will walk with him by crooked ways and bring, and bring fear and dread upon him and torment her with her discipline. We, we, you know, we're going through it. Oh man, this is hard. This is difficult, man. You know, sometimes you get a call from a brother like, yeah, man, I'm going through it, man. I'm going through these, man, I'm going through these battles. Man, sometimes, man, I feel like giving up, but I know I can't. And that's that fear, that's that, that dread, that torment. Because, man, it's like the Most High's wisdom is instructing us in His Word, and we're not used to that. So we're not used to that, it's like we're, we're like a fish out of water. <laughs> Struggling. What's that? Yeah, we're struggling, right. We're, we're struggling, but that's part of the process that we have to endure. Like the parable of the sower, they endure for a while, right? But then they fall away to the side. So why? Because that struggle was too much. But we have to know that this is part of the process. So then it says, so let me read that again. For at the first she will walk with them by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon them and torment her with her discipline. So it's, it's the discipline of the word of God, his commandments, his instruction, it's going to be a torment in, in, in the sense that, wow, man, I, I got to truly, really, I got to really change, man. I got to humble myself. I got to be patient. I got to be long suffering. And it's like, oh man, this is hard. This is a struggle. Because it's new to us. We're not used to this. We, we, we didn't have rule. We thought we had rule over our spirit. Oh, yeah, I'm a nice person. I'm quiet. No, no, we, we're rebellious, man. <laughs> we're rebellious people. So now we're going through a change. So someone can get afraid and they think that they can't go on. So the discipline that wisdom demands is going to be what? Difficult in the beginning. And let's understand that wisdom will put us to the test with its what? Requirements. There's requirements <laughs> when the most high wisdom puts us to the test. So it, it's, it's, it's the discipline on our part. It's the discipline on our part that's necessary until wisdom can trust us and that's what we're going to deal with so it's, I'll read the whole verse for at the first she will walk with them by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon them and torment her with a discipline until she may what? trust his soul right? trust his soul wisdom can trust us because the most I ain't going to reveal the secrets of wisdom to us if, if until wisdom can trust us. He's trying us in the furnace of adversity. So we got to come through that fire. For that glory. See? For that wisdom. The secrets of the wisdom. So, so it says, For, for at the first she will walk with him by crooked, crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment her with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her what? law so we're going to be tried in God's commandments and if we can endure patiently the twists and the turns right the difficulties the struggles and overcome the fear and the dread and the torment if we can humble ourselves to the discipline 
to the instruction that discipline, you know, requires of us, then what? What's going to happen? Then wisdom can trust us. So we have to understand that wisdom brings suffering until we are what? Faithful. Now when we begin to be faithful and humble ourselves, what happens next? Let's find out. Then she will return the what? Straight way onto him, see? So before it was what? The, the, the twists and the turns, right? Crooked paths. Now wisdom, wisdom is guiding us on a what? A straight path. See? And now we start to experience. Oh, now I see why Christ said my burden is easy. My yoke is light. In the beginning, it's going to be difficult. But if we can endure and humble ourselves. See, because a lot of times we think when Christ said my burden is easy, my yoke is light. That, you know, the second we come to the Lord, the, the, you know, especially in the beginning of our walk, throughout our walk, that, oh, yeah, it's just going to be, everything is going to be easy. No, we have to endure. We have to humble ourselves. That's, it's a process for us to get there for, for that burden to be easy and that yoke to be light. And the quicker we'll get there is when the quicker we humble ourselves. A lot of times we be fighting the most high in Christ. And then we discern wrong and say, I'm battling. I'm battling. Yeah, brother, I'm going through it. I'm battling, brother. All right, brother, what's going on? Oh, yeah, brother, I'm battling, brother. What's going on? And then you hear, discern, hey, brother, you saying you're going through this difficulty, that, that. In that behavior that you're speaking of, you're not applying the scriptures. And we don't apply the scriptures, we eat the fruit of our own doings. So really what's happening, brothers, you're submitting to the devil and resisting God. And I'm catching hell, brother. I'm going right and left, this way. A lot of times we create our own drama. We're not applying the scriptures. We're getting emotional. When we're supposed to be what? In the spirit, be patient. We all go through this. So we have to learn that all right, well, the most High saying at the first, wisdom will walk with us by crooked ways, but when the most High tries us in these commandments and we're being faithful and obedient, then wisdom, see, the Spirit can what? Trust us to what? Reveal. See, reveal the Father's will. Reveal these scriptures. Give us the Spirit. That's why I say, then will she return the straight way unto him. So there's a difference between a crooked path, right, and the straight path. Difficult path, the, the plot, the, the twists and the turns, that's the fear, the dread, the torment of the discipline. Eventually we have to get to a point, well, the most I said, make not haste in the time of trouble. I gotta be, I gotta learn discipline. And when we can humble ourselves to that discipline, then that wisdom can what? Trust us to the point where now the most I could reveal, right? Reveal that word through applying the word. That's how we understand the word. We have to apply it. We don't understand it just by reading it and quoting it. It sounds good. Then she will return the straight way unto him. And what? Comfort him. That's the opposite of what? Fear, dread, torment, right? And show him her what? Secrets, those the treasures of wisdom. That's not revealed to everybody. The secrets and treasures of the Most High's wisdom is revealed unto who? The babes. The babes in Christ, the humble in Christ, the faithful in Christ, the obedient in Christ. 
So notice the difference between 17 and 18 verse is still dealing with wisdom. But by the time we get to the 18 verse, obviously that man has what? He's enduring. He's enduring patiently in the word and wisdom and instruction of God because he fears God. And we didn't fear God in our worldliness, but we're learning to fear him. And when we fear him, we have to keep his commandments. And then we're going to be tried in the commandments. So the same things that in the past we would easily feed into, now we have to what? Resist. And in the beginning, that's a what? That's a struggle. Where fear, dread, and torment is upon us to the point where, you know, we don't know if we can go on and continue. You know, say, God, I don't know if I'm meant for this. This truth is hard. But they were taking it the wrong way. Most I said, the way of transgressors, that's hard. That's difficult. <laughs> when we lean upon our own understanding, that's hard. But we do understand that there's an element that at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. Wisdom will guide us along a path that's what? Got a lot of twists and turns. <laughs> the manifold, diverse temptations that we go through in this faith, the different trials of our faith. One day, it's, you know, it's, it's somebody trying to get you to lust. Another, one, another day is to break the Sabbath. Another day to be double-minded. It's just, it's just non-stop evil coming our way. So, like Christ said, the sufficient is the evil thereof. Every day got his own set of evils. Temptation trials that we got to endure. So, wisdom brings suffering until what? We are found what? Faithful. Torment, fear, dread, until we're found faithful. Then what happens? Wisdom will return. It will guide us in a way where a straight path. That brings us what? We're reading it. Comfort. And wisdom reveal its secrets. And these secrets are being revealed through what? Faith, obedience, discipline. That's when the most I reveal those treasures of the word. When now through applying the scriptures, we see the scriptures in a totally different light. Like, wow, man, I never knew that scripture, what that scripture meant, but I had to go through it. That's a powerful script. The, the way that we discern scriptures as we continue to grow in faith, it becomes higher and higher. We start to see, wow, man, this, I never saw the scripture that way. See, a lot of times we say that to ourselves, right? We read a certain thing, like, man, I ain't read this scripture in a long time. I remember when I first came into faith, how I looked at, it's deeper than what I thought it was. Yeah, how do we say that? Through experience. Because for us to say that and say when, you know, years ago or months ago, that means that we're still enduring, right? All right. So that wisdom will return onto us on a straight path. And it's going to bring what? Comfort. See, the scriptures comfort us. Wisdom comforts us. And that wisdom reveal it, reveals its secrets. And they're being revealed through what? Our faith, our obedience. Through our patience. Long suffering. So, let's read on now. But, if he go wrong, see, that's that temptation there. To go astray from what? The path where the Most High is revealing his... Where he wants to reveal unto us the treasures and secrets of wisdom. But what? We can go wrong. She, meaning wisdom, will what? Forsake him. 
That's why we was reading earlier in verse 13, he that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. All right? That's what we were reading. Verse 16, if a man commit himself unto her, he shall what? Inherit her. But we have to cleave unto wisdom. We have to desire wisdom. We have to seek wisdom early. But if she go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own what? Ruin. We're going to eat the fruit of our own what? Doings. We're going to eat the fruit of our own. We're going to eat the devices of our own doings. But if you go wrong, she will forsake him. So wisdom will forsake us. If we go in the path, what's that? Yeah, that wisdom will depart from us, right? Wisdom will forsake us. Wisdom is going to bounce. Because we're not trying to walk in the wisdom of the Most High. That wisdom is, is, is there if we apply ourselves and walk and endure in it. But if we go wrong, then wisdom will forsake us. And give us over to our what? Our own ruin. So it's showing us that we made the choice to despise and reject the wisdom of God. Go to um, Proverbs 1 and 7. Let's go to Proverbs 1 and 7. And this is where Israel fell in the wilderness. If you go wrong, wisdom will forsake her. She will forsake him. And lead him into his own what? Ruin. Who made those choices? Israel. We had the wisdom. But we didn't walk in it. See? It's one thing to... to the wisdom is there. Alright. But are we going to what? Draw an eye out to it. Are we going to hold fast to it? Most I spoke the Ten Commandments, right? But did Israel hold fast to it? No. Moses, the most I told Moses, they have quickly turned aside from the way where I commanded them. So with Moses in the mouth for 40 days, <coughs> wisdom was leading them upon a path of what? Crooked ways. Here come that temptation. Fornicate. Idolatry, right? And what happened? We would not what has become a Moses. See? <laughs> they, they, they had an itch that needed to be scratched. That that abiding in the wisdom of God, although they were baptized on a Moses, for many they didn't abide in that baptism onto Moses. With the cloud and in the sea. They forsook the Most High and his servant Moses. We would not what has become of him. Wait a minute, we baptized under Moses. We, we talking about we would not what has become of him. See? So they were tormented and they gave in. When we're tormented and that fear and dread come upon us, we have to what? Endure that aspect. But for many in Israel, they couldn't let go of Egypt. See, in Egypt, there was no discipline. The temptation comes to commit worldliness, feed into it. It's no struggle. There's no struggle in this world's Christianity. There's no discipline. There's no structure and order. They'll quote, oh yeah, Jesus said, if you love him, keep his... Yeah, he said that. But we got to be truly about it, though. And put off the worldliness. So now when it comes to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, pride of life, oh, we, now we have, we have a hard time letting go of Christmas and worldliness and these satanic holidays of this world, our own personal lust and thoughts that lead us astray. Same will have us think, think, thinking it's easier just live the life you want to live but that means that 
when we start to give an in to that that we've gone wrong wisdom will forsake us and now there is no discretion there is no discernment between what's right and wrong what's good and evil because saying god is like he got eat you determine what's good and what's evil what's right and what's wrong you your own god don't let that book tell you how to live your life say what have us don't let that guy teaching them scriptures tell you how to live your life <laughs> this be the different tricks that Satan play on our mind we have to know we have to endure that torment that fear that don't give in sometimes Satan got us thinking man I don't know if I could do it that ain't the most High telling you that who's telling you that the most High. Most High has appointed us to be tried in his law. So who got us thinking we can't endure? You're telling me the Most High and Christ and his wisdom is telling us that? No, that's us feeding into what? The flesh. Satan, the devil. So let's get this scripture, Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of God, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of what? Knowledge. So the, the, to, to, the beginning of seeking and obtaining, the, the, the beginning of obtaining the knowledge of God is to fear Him and seek Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The knowledge of who? The Most High. The beginning of obtaining that knowledge is we have to what? Fear him. So what does that fear entail? Trembling at his word. Being faithful. Being obedient. Actually applying the scriptures. Trembling at the word of God is what? Applying the word of God. In fear. What kind of fear? Godly fear. Remember, this fear is a godly reverence. It's not a fear like, oh, if I don't keep the Sabbath, most high gonna destroy me. You know, you know. No. That fear is talking about a, a love of reverence. It's it's a healthy, it's a, the most high said the fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. It's not a bad thing. We don't serve the most high because we're afraid that if we don't do what he's going to do, he's going to kill us. That's not. We fear the most high because we love the most high. We revere him. We, we tremble at his word because we believe that it's his word. And he is the most high. I mean, should we, we should be afraid of the wrath of God. Or, you know, <laughs> It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. It tells us that. That we fear God in the sense that what we reverence him. That's why we have to un understand scriptures in context. Yeah, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. When we've turned aside from our walk in the Most High in Christ, Most High going to leave us, wisdom will forsake us and leave us to our own what? Ruin. That's It's a fearful thing to be in that circumstance. So let us not tempt and try the Most High that way. <laughs> right? Because that's a scary place to be, man. Without David prayed to the Most High, he said, "Lord, take not Thy Holy Spirit from me." David dreaded that because he knows that if the Most High take that Spirit from you, we're dead. We're dead. Yes. I think when it says uh, to His own ruin, is that like the same thing when Christ? people your sin your your faith has healed you go and sin no more there you That's go right, right right go and sin no more right so now if now that sister there she has to walk now in what the the what she has to walk in the wisdom of the most high in christ christ and and because saying gonna try to get her to commit that sin again he said go and sin no more 
So at the first, wisdom will walk and, and walk in a path with her that's what? Got twists and turns and you know, it's, it's going, it's, it's the path is going this way, that way. We don't get to pick and choose our battles. But they're coming, steadily coming. See, and at the first, the most high said, it's going to bring fear and dread and torment. That's part of it. Don't think, oh, what the heck is going on? The scriptures say, beloved, think it not strange the fiery trials which is to try you. Let, let's get that, right? But yeah, to answer your point, yes, the, so that's something that she has to endure when Christ says sin not. In other words, sin not. Next time in similar circumstances, sin not. But you, she has to be taught those things. So sin led into the room. Yes. Well, if she go back to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord have, he, he, he forgave her. That because the Lord forgave her, shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound again and again and again no <laughs> the whole point of us being baptized that's the point Paul said in Romans 6 was about the death and burial of the old man and the rising of the new you just going to say something else brother? no, no I'll bring for you shows where that the other verse okay yeah hold this so hold this in Proverbs 1 and 7 go to um. You know, let me finish Proverbs 1 and 7 then I'm going to get that point mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise what? Wisdom and what? Discipline. Right? See? A foolish man is going to despise what? Wisdom. God's wisdom. God's knowledge. Right? God's word. Right? And what? Instruction. See? Man don't want to be instructed. I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to be told what I could do this Sabbath, Friday, Saturday, you know. I don't want to be told what to do with marriage and parenting. I don't want to be told. I, I just want to live my life. Nah, we, we got to walk in God's wisdom. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. Christ, we're bought with the blood of Christ. To glorify him in the way that we live. So a foolish man is going to despise wisdom and what? Instruction. Even though that fear and the dread and the torment come upon us, don't despise the discipline. Because it's really, it's the discipline that we're fighting. You know? It's like now we got to rule our spirit. So now it's, we're going on paths that, man, oh, this is hard, man. Like I'm having, you know, my job at home or a personal life. Going through these struggles. You know, and, and it's like the, the, the requirements of that discipline of the Most High's wisdom, it, 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 it could be difficult and bring fear and dread upon us. But understand the Most High trying us in, her, in, in His commandments, right? So that wisdom can trust us. So that now wisdom can trust us because we've been tried in God's commandments. Then it, then it guides us on a more straight path. Where before it was fear, dread, and torment. Now is what? Comfort as we continue our walk. And then the next stage of battle come, right? The next battles come. But the next time the next battle come, now we already have that prior experience. Ah, I see what Satan trying to do. This happened last time. Now I know what I got to do. I got to do what I did before. I got to endure. I got to be patient. I can't be tormented by this discipline. I can't give in to the fear and the dread. I already know. See, and that's how we grow. But we got to get through that phase, that first phase, to get to the next level. <clears throat> on the straight and narrow in Christ guiding us still going to have <laughs> temptations to endure trials but we know that these tests and trials are going to make us better for it but at first <laughs> we didn't know uh, what's going on here <laughs> 
So that's what, let's get that scripture in First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four and verse twelve. First Peter chapter four and verse twelve. Still trying to look for it? Yeah, First Peter, that's right before Revelation, right, right before the epistles of John. Are you close? Small, right? What's that? It's real small, right? Uh, yeah, con it's two books, First Peter and Second Peter. So, uh, oh, James. yeah, it's right after what? Book of James? Yeah. yeah, so it's after the book of James. Yeah. You'll get used to it, brother. You'll get there. Fear, dread, torment, right? <laughs> Be back. And then... You, you gotta endure. It's just like yesterday's battles. Man. The day before. See? The, the, the more we endure and be a faithful and obedient, wisdom trusts us. We're being tried in the law. Then we start to see the most high's wisdom is actually comforting. <laughs> You're like, wow, how about that, man? I remember I used to, I, I was fighting the Lord. I was scared, dread. Now it's like, man, I, I, I see, I live by this wisdom. It's a comfort to me. But in the beginning, that wisdom wasn't a what? A comfort. Why? Because it was fear, dread, torment, discipline. Like, ah, it's too much. I don't know if I could do it. Then you see, man, you know, I love this wisdom. It helps me get through it. I need it. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved. So we're beloved of who? God. So don't let Satan get in our mind that we can do it. I don't know if I'm cut out for this. It's too much. And Stop that. Stop them negative thoughts. Stop feeding into those negative thoughts. Beloved, think it not strange the fiery trial, which is to what? Try you. So we're going to go through fiery what? Trials. Wisdom going to walk with us in a path of what? Twists and turns. Crooked ways. So in Christ, we have to expange, ex, exp, uh, expect to experience fiery trials and don't think it what? Strange. as though some strange thing happened unto you. So in that fear and the torment, right? <laughs> Come upon us. Don't don't look at it as something that's bad for us. You know, like you got an immune system and then virus try to attack it and fighting it off. Because it knows that it's harmful. This wisdom is not harmful, it's helpful. So we can't fight it that way. It's not, it may be different to us, but it shouldn't be strange to us. Because we're here to follow who? The one whom the Most High said follow, Christ. That's why I said, but rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of what? Christ's sufferings. As Christ suffered, we have to be partakers of his sufferings. As he suffered, we have to suffer. So, we have to be partakers of sufferings. We have to endure these things. Then it said, and when his glory, and when his glory is revealed, when the Lord come back, ye may be glad also with what? Exceeding joy. So that joy carries over. When the 
Most High, that wisdom walk with us, bringing us that what? Joy. That joy carries over and helps us endure. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Joy is what helps us endure. Joy, even joying in our tribulations. For the Lord's sake, that is. Not for evil. That's where it go into, you keep reading. But yeah, so it say that ye may be glad also with exceeding joy, right? So let's get some scriptures on that. Go to, so we're still dealing with that wisdom, right? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. So, it may be new to us, but it shouldn't be strange. Because we should know. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, what? Prepare thy what? Soul. It's a spiritual battle. For what? Temptation. So when they come, I don't understand what's happening. We shouldn't get caught off guard. We have to be prepared. So how we prepare ourselves? We got to seek that wisdom early. Because the Most High likens a wise man unto a man that built his foundation upon who? A rock. So that's why we read, seek wisdom early. Get in these scriptures, apply these scriptures. Yeah, the fear and the dread and the torment is there, but you know what? That's part of the process, trust in the process. That's, what, that's the point in, in these scriptures that we're bringing out. Trust in the Most High. Don't give up. Don't give in. Them negative thoughts, that's not the Most High in Christ. Christ said, fear not, little flock, for it's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. But we have to understand that the fear and the dread and the torment, that's part of the process. The crooked ways... The the, the, the the twists and the turns and the ups, you know, they're just diverse temptations. It's just preparing us for what? The next set of circumstances and trials. Yeah. Yeah, they're like building blocks. Don't let it become a stumbling block where we give in. You have to look at it. Hey, most I tried me to the fire because he got big plans for me. And it starts right here. Because the only one that's going to get in the way is the man in the mirror. It ain't the white man. It ain't Esau. It's not the government. It's not your job. It's not this man, that woman. It's ourselves. We can't even say the devil. There's an element of Satan there, with that temptation, that every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Allow himself to be enticed. So wisdom of Solomon, right? I mean, not, I'm sorry, Proverbs. Chapter, Proverbs chapter 4, verse, I'll be from the first verse, right? Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to know what? Understanding, see? So this is Solomon speaking, because he himself was taught of his father. Now he's a man, and what's he telling? Children, hear the instruction of a father. Because a father is supposed to raise his children in what? The word of God, the commandments of God. So hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to know what? Understand. We read that in Ecclesiastes 4. Attend. Attend. Remember Lydia? She attended unto the things that were spoken unto her of Paul. What does that mean? She attended. She was listening, taking heed, taking it to heart. It was changing her. She said, if thou judge me to be faithful, you know, if thou, ju if thou hast judged me to be faithful unto this Lord that you have preached, come to my house. Come inside and, and continue to teach me. See? That's what Lydia said. 
that she attended unto the things that were spoken to her Paul. What was Paul preaching? The wisdom of God, the instruction of God. That's why the sister repented and got baptized and her whole household. Her whole household got baptized. Because there's a protection in that. Remember we read that Ecclesiastes? He, that when we lay hold to that wisdom, we dwell what? Safely. We want that hedge, that protection, man. When we walk in the fear of God, the wisdom of God, there's a lot of stuff that's going on around us. But none of those things going to touch us. Because we're being protected. Psalm 34 and 7 say, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So most high God, invisible forces, brother, that's out there, angelic beings, brother, that's protecting us. Not even our foot going to get dashed against the stone. But we got to walk what? Not by sight, but by what? Faith. You got to trust in the Most High. We have to be faithful. We got to be obedient to the Most High. We got to trust in the Word of God. We got to fear God. We have to apply these scriptures. We have to walk in these scriptures. That's what this is about. Not playing the role. Acting the role. Walking in it. Not say, I'm going to do this. No, I am, we're doing this. I'm going to do that. That's pride talk. Verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. That's what a father's teaching his son. The Most High gives good doctrine, don't forsake his law. For I was my father's son. See? Solomon was the son of David. Tender. And only beloved in the sight of my what? Mother. See? So he was beloved of his mother in the sight of his mother. He taught me also and said, ultimately, who is the he? It's the most high. Through the parents, right? What did what did so, so, Although his father and mother teaching him, he discerned it as the father. That's how we have to look at it. You know, for the ones, you know, yeah, one sister here being taught by her father, right? So, you know, we're coming out of a world where our father's parents, for most of us, didn't teach us. But when they are, that's, we, we got to discern like Solomon discerned. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and what? Live. See, that's how we discern the instruction coming from father and mother when they're coming with these scriptures. What is, what is these scriptures saying through the father and mother? Let thine heart retain my words. That's, you're supposed to tell your children that. That your heart retain. When you're retaining it, that means what? You're walking in it. You're guarding it. You're keeping it. Keep my commandments and live. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. See? Get that wisdom. Get the understanding. How does the understanding come about? We got to retain it. We have to apply it. Remember... The secrets of wisdom is revealed unto us when what? Wisdom can trust us. When we're being tried in the law and we're submitting ourselves to the commandments. Because every man going to be tried in God's commandments. When we go through trials and temptations, the Most High is going to bring out what's in our heart, whether we're going to keep His commandments or not. That's what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 8. I believe it's verse 3. He's going to say something, brother? No, no. Okay. Um, so, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. What does it mean by forget, forget it not? Meaning mean, take heed. Don't turn away. Yeah, don't turn away. Listen to walk in it, apply it. 
neither decline from the words of my what mouth. A parent may even say that too. Don't man, don't you deviate from what I'm telling you, because that parent that they know that what that father mother saying. Look, these I'm giving you the instruction of this word here. Forsake her not, and she shall what preserve thee. But if we forsake her, really, if we go wrong, wisdom forsakes us. We forsake her. That means we went wrong. Wisdom forsake us. Forsake her not, and she shall what? Preserve thee. Love her. See, again, it's referencing wisdom as a in a figure of speech. But we understand that this wisdom is wisdom that comes from what? Above. And it's the most high in heaven. There's none else. There is no other God beside it. It's the most high. And Christ sitting on the right hand of the most high. Forsake her not. And she shall what? Preserve thee. Love her. And she will what? Keep thee. That's what we were reading in Ecclesiastes 4. So. Wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Both dealing in what? Wisdom. Saying the same thing. So do the apocrypha go against the Bible? That's what some people say. Oh no, we don't read the apocrypha. They don't go with the, that's a lie. They ain't read the, the apocrypha. That's part. Of, it's part of the original sixteen eleven, going back to the ancient uh, scriptures. I we ain't read nothing that contradict. It's saying the same thing. Why? Because we have to understand that the prophets spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Well, yeah, the writer of Ecclesiastes he didn't have the Holy Spirit. What are you talking? About? He didn't have the Holy Spirit. He's saying the same thing Solomon's saying. The saint don't want us to get into the apocrypha. Why? Because there's hidden treasures and secrets in those books and those words too. The saint don't want us to know. So here comes Israelites pushing Edomite doctrines. Ah, oh, the apocrypha, uh, it's this, it's that, it's this. And stop lying. The saint don't want us to get into the whole world. Okay, follow these guys that are saying that. Now you're following the New Testament and Psalms. Please. These guys are serpents, man. These so-called Christians. They have had, they got Christians. They're antichrists. What's he going to say, brother? I was told about him. Don't read the Apocrypha yet. Until you read the whole Bible. Don't read the Apocrypha yet until you read the whole... Well, that doesn't make sense because the Apocrypha is part of the Bible. <laughs> You see the words of man? Don't read the Apocrypha yet till you read the whole Bible. Well, my Bible got the Apocrypha in it. So what you saying? Yeah. And then the Apocrypha is history. Okay, like when you go into the uh, the ones that Bibles that don't have King James Version, it stops at Malachi, right? Mm -hmm. So you got the history. What about the history of the Greeks before the Romans? Because in, in the in the Old Testament, it stops at the Persian Mede, right? You had Babylonians came into power, and the Persian Medes. Then, by the time you get to Matthew, Roman. What about the people that were ruling, that took out the Persian Medes before the Romans came into power? That go into the history of what? The Maccabees. Mm -hmm. So, that's a lie of the devil. Read the Bible first, then the Apocrypha. You read the Apocrypha along with the Bible. Go hand in hand. Because you're not going to understand the New Testament, so to speak, if you don't understand the Old, especially going into the history of, of the Maccabees. You're not going to understand the term circumcision, uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. Gentiles. Scripture say there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Oh, there's no difference between the Israelite and the other nation. Greek. No, that's not. You got to go into the history. So, yeah, so people be very deceptive. You know, so we have to be very discerning, right? When we hear, when we hear things, we gotta be like we, we gotta have a filter, man. Like we're filtering, like okay, what what is he saying here? What is he really saying? Because it, it's a difference between what somebody's saying, what they're really saying. See, they're saying 
oh, it seem innocent. Oh, don't read the apocryphal TV, read the Bible. But what is he really saying? What doctrine and certain, what point of view is he coming from? He's coming from a doctrine, possibly, you know, could be possible. I, you know, I shouldn't make a joke because somebody might be saying that sincerity. But when people come with that doctrine of Christianity, they're saying that, like, because they don't believe. Was this, like, somebody that uh, is a Christian, so to speak? Yeah. So, so, you know, they have to understand that that was, it was part of the scriptures. You know? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. That's what we talking about wisdom. They don't have that wisdom. Right. To, to, to see, the, you know, this situation, like he said, like brother said. So, see, that's it's hidden for them. Yet. It's, it's not for them yet. It's not for them yet. Right. <laughs> that's a good point. It's not because they, 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 you know, to say that statement to begin with. Okay. Did you? So did I would go? Did you read the whole Bible and then the Apocrypha? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with you saying that because you're not trying to be a smart aleck. You know, we got to be on guard not to be smart Alex. you know. <laughs> but, you know, we have to, you know, hey, I said, what are you saying? You know, nothing wrong. He, he got saying, you have the right to say. You know, of course, we're trying to avoid strife. Mm -hmm. So I hear what you're saying. So let's continue here in the uh, Wisdom of Solomon 4. I mean, uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But, and with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. See? So seek the wisdom, but you got to get the what? You got to understand the wisdom. And how do you understand it? It only comes through what? Application. See? Somebody can give you a book on how to build a car, right? From scratch. Right? How do you get the understanding? You actually got to follow the instruction of that book. Do it, right? Ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. Learn, humble yourself. And then now you got... Man, because I, I, I understand what that manual is saying. That book, that instruction. Because I actually did what it said. So we got to do what the scriptures say to understand what the scriptures saying. Or else me or you, any of us quoting scriptures... What understand do we have? How many people close to it? They don't. They don't. They they lying. They understand what's written. They'll take a scripture and take it totally out of context to make it say something that is not saying. They don't understand. We're saved by grace, not the works of the law. See, we don't have to keep the law. Uh, what are you talking about? Understand the context. Ultimately, we are saved by grace, but our duty is to keep the Most High's commandments. So, then it says, in 8, exalt her, and she shall what? Promote. So, how do we exalt wisdom? Listening, Listening right. Listening. Seeking it. Applying it, right. Doing it. Then what? Wisdom what? Promotes us to the next what level? Like you said, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a building block because there's going to be a next set of what circumstances where we want that wisdom to be what walk with us in a way where it's not bringing fear and dread and torment because we're actually growing in this faith. See, we got to grow up, man. We got to grow up in this walk. So each level won't be a challenge? Each walk is going to be a challenge. It's actually going to be more difficult in the sense, you know, that to whom much is given, much is required. So the, 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 the more stronger in faith we become, the, 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 of course, the tests and trials are going to be harder. But we know that what? We're not going to give in to that fear and dread and discipline to discourage us to give up. We're going to what? Enduring it. And when we endure in it, that's when it kicks in finally. My yoke is easy, my burden. Because a lot of times, I don't know what the Lord's talking about, man. This truth is hard for me, man. You know, Christ said, My yoke is easy, my burden is light, man. I, it's difficult for me. Yeah, because we got to go back into that wisdom. Mm. You're not under, you, you, you're thinking it's strange, the fiery trial that's trying you. And you're not dealing with it right. So it says, because it. 
wisdom trust thy soul and it will show you the secret so the secret right. for the next level is just the yeah. understanding and thank you but because when you get those secrets revealed those hidden hidden treasures of wisdom you can now we're more discerning now we're more spiritual now it's not per se like a like a weapon per se that's it is a weapon <laughs> so put on the put warfare the, right put on the the, the sword of spirit the helmet of faith yeah go ahead brother so like like the, problem, the building brackets okay the next set of uh, uh, you know trials uh, yeah. yeah it's when you first level you're learning the wisdom right according to what we read now the wisdom trusts us and showing us the secrets right. so now it's showing us this is how you apply your life in the next set of uh, yes. obstacles per se. and then you see I need you to go through that and then you look back, man, I remember, man, I was going to give up. I didn't know if I was cut out for this. I'm so glad that the Most High was merciful unto me and he helped me through this. Because now I know no, what, no matter what comes, fear, dread, and torment, that, that, was, that's, that was part of the process. You know, and we still can feel those bouts of that. Even the Lord, man, he's, he was agonizing over his death. To the point where the Lord, he was... He thought blood was going to come out of his pores, man. And he prayed and prayed and prayed to the Father that the, the Most High would strengthen him to endure that. And it tells you in the book of John, the angel of the Lord strengthened him. See? So we're going to endure to the end, brother. Don't think, okay, the first initial stage, you know, on this path where wisdom walks with us, like we were reading where it's... Um, like we were reading, like how, how it was saying, uh, it comes, you know, walk, wisdom walks with us in a straight path, bringing us joy. That, yes, it, that inner joy to continue to what? Endure. It's not like one phase and now you made it. One phase, one step leads us to the next. So, to our last breath. What's that? So, it'll be with us to our, to our last, book, last breath. Brother, exactly. I mean, look at Eliezer. It was that a that was a difficult trial in the sense that what his life was on the line at first it was eat this swine's flesh and partake in this idolatrous feast or die and then they were like alright he ain't down with that so alright let's pretend it's let's look, we'll give you lawful meat yeah, we'll give you some lamb. Don't tell you what it was. I'm just making a point. They, let's give them law. We'll give you law for me. Just eat it so the people think you're eating swine's flesh. And what did he say? Send me the grave. That they, that would he had to endure. But when you when you look at it, that man was. He willed them to. The, he said, "Yeah, y'all got y'all gonna bury me today because I'm not giving in." See. How you get to that level? It said from a youth he was instructed in the law of Moses, man. He he applied himself, and what we're reading here in Proverbs four, he was that he was this guy here. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father. Eliezer, he was he was this guy right here. He was I was my father's son. Right? Yeah, that's right. He was that guy right there. Yeah, I for I was my father's. Eliezer was his the son of his father. What did it tell? Go, go get that in Second Maccabees six. Not Second Maccabees. Uh, Second Maccabees. Uh, what is it? Twelve. Hold on. Yeah, Second Maccabees six. <clears throat> Uh, second man can be six and eighteen. Wisdom will what? Preserve us. Doesn't mean that tests and trials ain't gonna go they're gonna go away now. <laughs> they we, Christ had us endure temptation suffers to the day he what? Died, man. Second Maccabees chapter six and verse eighteen. But remember, wisdom shall what? Preserve you. See? Because wisdom is now trusting us. Second Maccabees 
2 Maccabees chapter 6, 18. So let's read some of the points in here. So this is during the time of the Greeks, right? So if we oh, take this out, we don't know. We don't know this. This is powerful here, man. We didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, this. we didn't. I didn't know this. No, I didn't, I didn't know this. No, I didn't know. I didn't know nothing. Somebody said, go to the book of John. I'm like, oh, where's that? Who's John? Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we didn't know nothing. So it says, Eliezer, one of the principal scribes. So now we're reading about a scribe in Israel. See, not all the scribes were bad. During this time or the time of Christ. Then you had guys that had the title of scribe during the tribe of Eliezer, so during the time of Eliezer and the time of Christ, and Christ spoke about those ones that weren't right. He called them what? Hypocrites. It's the scribes sit in Moses' seat. Do not ye after their work, for they say and do not. <laughs> Eliezer, one of the principal scribes. So he was like, he would be like, like, oh, what's his name? Nicodemus. Like Nicodemus was not, he was like, oh, not any teacher, a oh, master teacher. And the Lord told him, you got to be born again. He was like, born again? I got to come out of my mother's womb a second time? Lord, like, you a master in Israel? You don't know this? Nicodemus had a lot to learn. Yeah. But he, according to the doctrine in Israel, once you know you're an Israelite and you wear your friend's blue border, stop eating pork, make sure your wife got her head covered, don't eat pork, uh, keep the commandments, know you Israel, believe in the Most High in Christ, you're already born again. Nicodemus had that pedigree, so to speak, already. See? So even Israel, you know, just because the Israelite teaching us, uh, they coming with the understanding in context. So, let's read this. So, Eliezer, one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat what? What swine's flesh? Pork. Bacon. Right? Bacon bits. Pig feet. Spam. Chitlins. Well, chitlin. What is chitlin? Ain't that the intestines? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that'd be more. See, there's more to swine, but would be in the chitlins be swine. <laughs> so it says. So he was consent. To, now we know according to the law in Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14, that what? We're not supposed to eat the swine's flesh. And it's an abomination, right? Okay. But he choosing rather to what? Die gloriously than to live stained with such an a what? Abomination. Abomination spit it forth. So they were trying they were trying to shovel it in his mouth. Like, <laughs> and came of his own accord to the what? Oh. Torment. Wisdom at first is torment. But once that wisdom can trust you, right? It reveals its secrets. And when the Most High reveal those secrets of the scriptures onto us, those hidden treasures, now you're willing to what? Be tormented and be tormented where it's not something that, that's, that you're fighting against, something that you're, you know, dreading, see? He came of his own accord to what? He, so he, he willingly subjected, subjected himself to be what? Tormented. That's the frame of mind we have to be. Oh, cause, you know, we at the job, we have, oh, you know. Oh, we made some food. Now, at the job, they're not forcing us, right? I hope not. We get in trouble for that, but... Might, uh, there, a time might come in the future where they're going to have they're going to make us do these things see so that brother was willing to be tormented 
He chose rather to die gloriously. Just like Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? A season. Short lived, right? Summer is gone, right? And today's still warm, but uh, you know, we, can, we know we're in a different season, right? That's the pleasure of sin. It's short lived. In the morning, do you feel the cold? Yeah. Where before it was hot. It was five in the morning, it's hot. See, but this world and the glory of the world is it's, it's short lived. Eliezer knew this. The treasures, the treasures and secrets of wisdom being revealed unto Eliezer showed him to die gloriously and to be stained with such an abomination. Where a man that 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 goes wrong, wisdom forsakes him. Like this is his own people, man, behind this. You try to tell me they don't know the law. They don't know the script. They know the scriptures, but knowing them, that's not good enough. <clears throat> The fear of the Lord is the beginning. You got to tremble at the word. But he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live, stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. That set the, the tone for the next chapter where you had the seven sons and the mother that died in the span of one day. And they refused to partake in the idolatrous feast and eating swine's flesh. Yeah. So when you say Eliezer at this point, he got a certain wisdom already. Oh yeah, he the treasures of wisdom. He 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 he, he locked in it. He's, yeah. He's up there already. Yeah, because you he got, said to say to say rather to die gloriously. Right. He had to have that understanding. Yeah, he that knew. wisdom. Yeah, he knew. He knew that the path of immortality is to keep God's commandments. So if I have to die, if I, I got to break God's commandments, I'm forfeiting right. my salvation. At that point, at this, yeah, at, yeah, this. at this point, yeah. So he had the treasure, that treasure of wisdom that was revealed to him of the Father. He kept it, and he didn't let go of it. See, he kept it, even when his life is on the line. So should we be getting weak because people are gonna talk about us? Well, I don't want to offend my grandma. It's, it's, it's your mother getting offended because you don't eat swine's flesh? Your your mother? Your father? Your son-in-law? Your boss on the job? Co-workers? We, we, we can't be worried about what people say, feel, and think about us. If they're offended, they're going to be offended at this. Well, the Most High said in Leviticus 11, we're not to eat the swine's flesh. It's an abomination. So when they get offended, who are they really getting offended at? It's not our judgment, it's God's judgment. That's why the Most High said in Deuteronomy, don't fear the face of man. Well, I might, they might fire me. Who cares, man? They can't fire you, and if they do, they're going to get into And if they do, and you, then that's, we're going to be like Eliezer. We're gonna, you know, we, 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 we're going to, whatever it is, God willing, through faith, we're going to deal with it. You'd rather fall into the hands of God than into what? The hands of men. I, I, what, what the Most High got next for me, keeping His commandments, that's what's up. <laughs> I ain't worried about what other people are coming with. Yep. You said in Deuteronomy, it says don't fear the face of the man. Yeah, Deuteronomy 1. That's also in Jeremiah. Yep, Jeremiah 1 too. There you go. We'll get both of them scriptures. Go do Deuteronomy 1. Deuteronomy 1 and verse 16. And this goes against that doctrine and spirit of this world's Christianity when the commandments are being taught. That spirit come out, oh, that's judging. You're judging. 
Well, the scriptures can go out when it's judging, when it's condemning, and fault finding, and harsh and critical. That we do have to be on guard against. But actual correction itself can never be twisted into judging. And here's an example of that, verse 16. And I charge your judges at that time. So did Israel have judges during the time of, of Israel? And Israel, yeah. So can somebody say to them judges, you're judging me. <laughs> say only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. You know, so they'll take scriptures out of context and make it seem like you can't be corrected. Mm. Remember, Israel, we're a people that love to hear smooth things. So when the message is being preached to justify the lust of the flesh, we're going to get the flattery of the tongue. We're going to get the praise of men. And then we're going to eat that up like, yeah, that's the way the scripture is supposed to be taught. No, they're not. Most I said, this is a rebellious people, children that will not hear the law of God. So let's read this. And I charge your judges at that time saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteous. That's the key, right? So you have to hear the controversies and matters between brothers. You discern according to what you, what's being said on both sides. And then you bring forth what? What the word of God says. And judge righteously between every man and his brother. And the stranger that is within him. So even the strangers that dwelt among us. We had to hear their cause. And couldn't pick sides. Oh, that's an Egyptian. This is my Israelite brother here. I'm going to take my brother's side when the Egyptian is right. Here, you stole the Egyptian's cattle. <laughs> you know? And now the Egyptian coming... Hey, this man's, he, what did he do? He did? All right, well, let's hear the man. Not, man, get out of here, heathen. Nah, we, we're righteous people. We're not like Esau. That They're not like that with us, the nations. There's partiality. And that's supposed to be that with us. You shall not respect persons in judgment. No, meaning what? Partiality. But you shall hear the small as well as the great. You got to hear both sides of a matter. You shall not be afraid of the what? Yeah, you ask the scripture. You, you, you seeing that, Phil? Mm -hmm. We're not to be, so when the scriptures go out, don't be afraid of, because man, how they're going to respond? How they gonna respond? They might be angry and then I wear a I don't want, you know, I don't want to ruffle feathers. Nah, you, the scriptures got to come out. What's wrong is wrong and what's right is right. Speak the truth. Hear what's happening. Speak the word. Don't jump to conclusions. Bring forth the word. Don't be afraid of the face of man. For the judgment is what? God's. The most I say we're not to eat swine's flesh. The most I say we're not to steal. Right? Or any other commandment. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. And what? Judge it. <laughs> All right. So the other one you're talking about, Phil, that's in Jeremiah, where he told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the face of man. So it's the same thing. So we ain't got to get it, but yeah, that goes with it. Don't be afraid of these people, because Israel's rebellious. The most I knew, they're going to give Jeremiah, they, man, Jeremiah, they gave him, that gave that brother a hard time. See, don't be afraid. He said, if you, if you fear, I'm, I'm a, if you, if you fear, I'm a, I would say, go to Jeremiah 1 real quick. Jeremiah 1. And 8. From, I'll read from 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. So wherever the Spirit would lead him, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt what? Speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to what? Deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then he says, 
It's, uh, let me see the part I wanted. Um, we most high, I'll confound you before your enemies. Here, uh, check out the 17th verse. Thou therefore gird up thy loins. See, so man got his garment. Now you gotta gird up his loins and tie up that garment. He ready to what? And arise and speak unto thee. I'm upset. And speak unto them all that I shall command thee. Right? Be not dismayed at their faces. Right? Lest I what? Confound thee before them. So we have to be humble, humbly bold and faithful to the Most High and not fear man. Because you don't know who coming, you don't know who's coming, Jerry. It could be a prince of Israel, king of Israel. So Israel, you know, Most High could send him before another people and speak. So the prophets had a lot of opposition, man. So yeah, be not afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid to speak the truth. That's now what does that mean? Don't be afraid to speak the truth. Because if we're afraid, then the most high confound us before our enemies. So we have to be faithful and obedient to the most high. In the moment, and the judgment is God's. So let's go back to 2 Maccabees 6. Now we got to go back to wisdom. Of, uh, we ain't going to be able to do it today, but. 2 Maccabees 6. Verse 20. And it, as it behooved them to come that are resolute. So it's talking about Eliezer and those like Eliezer. That are resolute. What does resolute mean? Meaning stand, you're standing firm, right? Holding your ground, right? Building, because you built your foundation upon a rock. That's a wise man, a man of what? What we're talking about today, wisdom. And it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things. So we're supposed to be resolute to stand out against evil things. We should not be afraid. As are not lawful. Even for what? For the love of life to be tasted. Not even if your life is on the line do we eat unlawful food. We're not to eat swine's flesh under any circumstances. Break God's laws under any circumstances. Even if our life is on the line. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast. Israelites. Pushing Greek fashions. For the old acquaintance, acquaintance they had with the man. So the ones promoting him to do this wicked feast, to partake in this wicked feast among Israel, was his own what? Friends. Well, with friends like that, you don't need enemies, right? <laughs> what kind of friend is that? These are guys that he, he was raising the commandments with. And what? They, they, they like we read Ecclesiastes, they... Um, they've gone wrong. Wisdom has forsaken them. Wisdom has forsaken them so bad that they're going, the devil going to speak to them on a high level right here. That they that had the charge of that wicked feast for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside. See, so now, hey, come over here, come over here. You ever had somebody like, come over here, come over here, let me talk to you. Exactly, bro. Trying to persuade him. Brought him to bring flesh of his own what? Provision. Any meat you want. That's lawful. Such as was lawful for him to what? You. So what's lawful meat? Beef, cattle, uh, cattle, lamb, goat, right? For example. And make as if he did eat of the flesh. 
swine's flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the what? What king? The king of the Greeks, Antiochus, not the Most High, not the king of Israel in his right mind. It's talking about what? Antiochus, the king of the Greeks. Evils multiplied on the earth more and more under this guy. That in doing so, he might be delivered from death. For the old friendship with them, find favor. So his friends will look out for him. Look, just pretend it's lawful meat. Well, no, you can eat lawful meat. You'll pretend to the people that it's the swine's flesh. Because they just, because if, you got to understand the semantics behind this. If they can get, because what did it tell us about Eliezer? He was a what? A scribe of an aged man. He, if they can get him to sin, we got the rest. We got the whole nation. So these, his friends had what in them? The devil in them. So they were like, if we can get him on our side, we got the whole nation. And why were they pushing it? Because they would receive rewards. They in it for the money and the glory and the power and the wealth and the women and the Greek fashions. and So these, these are sellouts, man. Traitors, man, they're traitors. Most of us in the last days shall there shall be what? Traitors. These are traitors. What kind of friend comes with that kind of proposition? That he began to consider what? Discreetly. See? Discerning. Discerning. The treasures of what? Wisdom, right? As became his what? Age. Because the scriptures tell us in the book of Job that age and years should speak wisdom. The older you get, you're supposed to speak great wisdom, right? And the excellency of ancient years and the honor of his gray head, the gray haired man now. He was like 90 something, I forgot where it tells you. I don't know if it's a little further down, but so it said, where until he was come? As his most honest education from a what? So from a child. That, remember we were reading that in Proverbs 4? I learned, I forget how to say it, but he learned from his father. Solomon learned from his father. And what did, and what did the most I say through his father? Keep my commandments. Wisdom shall preserve thee, right? So what is this discretion based on? Wisdom through experience. That's, so this is the level we want to attain in this walk right here, man. This is what Christ taught. The he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. This is enduring to the end. See, when I first came in the truth, the end is, yeah, when the Lord come with the chariots. <laughs> Christ going to come with the chariots. World War Three. Russia and America. The Lord's coming like a thief in the night, man. Christ said, you shall hear wars and rumors of war. So it says, but he began to consider discreetly as became his age. See, so this brother was taught from his youth. As became his age and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head, whereunto he was come and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. So is it the law of Moses or the law of God? In, in, in the Ten Commandments, which is the covenant, were written with what? The finger of God. Therefore he answered what? Accordingly. Accordingly. Let's see. And will them straightway Straight ways to send him to what? I'm ready to die. Y'all gonna have to kill me. Check out what he says. 
For it becometh us not in our age, said he, in any wise to what? Dissemble. He cut them. To dissemble means to what? Deal falsely. So there is a time where in speaking God's wisdom, it's going to cut those that's hearing it. But is Eliezer afraid of the face of man? No. You know why? Because when we fear God, we don't fear the face of man. Ultimately, you, know, you might have your butterflies. Man, I don't want to, man, do I got to deal with this? It's going to, nah, we're going to deal in these scriptures, man. Because this is wickedness. See, and Eliezer, I see that. For it becometh, for it becometh not our age, said he in any ways, to dissemble. Whereby many young persons might think that Eliezer, being four, four score year old, we're now gone into what? A strange religion. See? So the writer here, what's happening here, he's bringing out, for it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise, to dissemble. He's telling them, look, it's not wise for us to deal falsely. Whereby many young persons might think that Eliezer being four score years old, that's 80, and 10, that's 90, we're not gone into a strange religion. This world's Christianity got it different. You don't celebrate whatever, uh, what's the day where they, well, all the feasts they got, they got pork. But, uh, I don't know, whatever feast, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Um, they think we strange. You don't eat, you don't eat pork? There's this one brother of my job. He always got something to say. They had, uh, what was it? Um, I don't know, some meal they made. And it had pork in it. And they were like, yeah, you know, they, they say, he ain't going to eat it because it's not healthy. I said, I ain't going to eat it because it's, Ain't no pork on my fork. <laughs> I was like, I said, I said, I don't, I don't eat pork. So I, I already told him. Now I, I explained why. About the dietary laws. And then one dude was like, you don't know what you're missing. I said, I know what I'm missing. Shoot. <laughs> Eternal life. <laughs> That's what I'm missing. That's why I, I know what I'm missing. Worms. Sickness. See. Say you ain't gonna play them tricks when we are, you know, resolute like this guy here. But we have to maintain that. So, yeah, and then he with the brother, he says, yeah, you know, when I die, when they do the autopsy, they're going to be, man, he ate good. I'm like, man, this guy don't know what the heck he's talking about. So when they operate you and they see that you had swine's flesh in your dead, you ate good? They can tell that. Huh? There was something where they could tell a person ate a lot of pork. Well, yeah, of course. Of yeah. So, you know, that's the mentality of our people. You know, I, I ain't mad at the brother. I understand what's happening. You know, Satan got our people tricked. You know? So, ain't no grudging. Bitterness, nothing like that. You know, deal with them like deal with y'all brothers. That's a that's that's a, that's a brother. But I let it be known, you know. Uh, and there's can't be afraid to 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 speak. And we understand we on the job. We gotta be careful, right? We don't want to, you know, start. And the Lord said, "Thou shalt eat the spot flesh." You know, you gotta be smart. But when it's coming to us, now we gotta hold our ground. You know, no, no one was pressuring me to do it because they know they ain't. Uh, they ain't but the mic time might come. Like it, it ain't. It's your life. Either you gonna do this or die. Now, oh well, we're under grace. Uh, uh, you know, when we come with excuses. You know, my family needs me. The brothers and the truth need me. I. I no, we need the most high in Christ. So they they so he knew that the people would think he went into a strange religion. This world got it flipped. It's strange if you don't eat swine's flesh. And 
partake in idolatrous feasts like Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving and all these other, you know, unrighteous days. And so, th and they, through my hypocrisy, see, because he's, he's, it's all a big act. He's eating the swine's flesh. And it, it appears that way, but he's eating lawful meat. This, this ain't Hollywood, man. This is real deal. A desire to live a little time in a moment longer. See? Okay, let's say he takes the deal. He live a little time, a little longer, right? But then what? You gotta, now you got to give account to the Most High, the Day of Judgment. To what? To live a little longer? Eliezer realized, my time to die is now. I didn't, you know, I'm sure he didn't know it was going to be like this. That he was prepared, obviously. When your life is on the line, man, that's, that's, the Lord showed us, you know, it's, it's, I'm back in here. it's, 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 Satan is there, man. Should be deceived by me. See, he didn't want the people to be deceived by him. And I get a stain to my old age and make it what? Abominable. He didn't want in his old age to be known as a man that was about the word and commandments of God and look at him in his old age. He forsook the law of God. Even though technically he didn't, right? That's how Satan got done. It, it wasn't swine's flesh. It, it was law for me. Yeah, but you still show to the people that it was swine's flesh. Then here comes this world's Christianity. Oh, well, God knows my heart. Then here come them excuses. He didn't come that way. For through the present, for for though the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. So he'd rather fall into the hands of God than into the hands of what men. See, that is powerful. All praises. Yeah, man, that that's a highlighting scripture right there, right? Everybody highlighting that verse. <laughs> for though the for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Because alive you a dead man walking anyway. Dead you ain't gonna escape because when you risen to be judge of God, he gonna, he gonna have to give account. That's wisdom right there. That's the treasures of wisdom right there, brother. That's the treasures of wisdom right there, because he knows the resurrection too. He know that's the that's the point. The treasure of wisdom is when you know what's tied to this, to these commandments. We read it. The commandments are we read in Proverbs four. The doctrine of what life, not just preserve our life, but eternal life. Where in this world's Christianity, the law of God is despised. They hate God's commandments. That's why they teach doctrines. We don't have to keep the commandments of God. Just some of them. Come on, man. So alive or dead, we can't escape the hand of the Almighty. Because what? Like we read last week, your sin will what? Will find you. Find you out. Your sin will find you. See? Man thinking he got, yeah, you know. I got to live another day. Next thing you know, horse. I don't know where. Man, knocks you over. Cripple. Uh, some wild horse. <laughs> Boom, knock the guy over. Not this brother. Did a man attempt the Lord like that? See, so alive or dead, we can't escape the most high. That's now that's the fear of God right there, man. That's worshiping God in spirit and in truth right there. Oh, what's the... It's just... It's just bacon. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? So God is going to kill me because I eat this bacon? It, it, what, that's temp, that, you're tempting, man. You're tempting. 
tempting God and you're tempting the man that you're saying that to. To think, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, it, nah. Wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such as one as mine age requireth. Meaning, man, he, manfully, he was ready to, what's the change in his life? He alive today, he gonna die this day. But he took it what? Manfully. The woman in the next chapter, she had the stomach of a what? Of a man. Where she learned that example from? This brother. That's why it talks, talks about wisdom. It's generational. It's it's you know her children shall hold take hold of what wisdom's children those that follow the, the wisdom. He set the tone. Tell you in the next chapter that the woman in the span of one day seven of her sons were tormented, and to tell you that she she was the most courageous of all. And when she dealt in that temptation. It's like she had to, you would think like, man, that's something like Eleazar, Mattathias, you know, would, would say, you know. The way she, she spoke like a, like a warrior, man. She was a female warrior, you know. <laughs> because it's the spirit of God in Christ, that's why. You know, it's not by our spirit, by our power, our might, but the spirit of the Most High. This is the spirit of God. This ain't Eleazar. This is the spirit of God in Eleazar. Wherefore now manfully changing this life, I will show myself such as one as mine age required. I'm going to show an example of how man, one my age is supposed to be. And leave a notable example to such as be young to what? Die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy what? Laws. This world's Christianity will have us believe or the doctrine of this world's Christianity, right? Which can permeate, permeate in the church if we're not on guard against it to have disregard for the Most High's commandments. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the what? Torment, and he did it what? Willingly. They that led him, changing the good will they have, they have, I'm sorry, and the, that they that led him, changing the good will, they bear him a little before into what? So it's now, now his friends, right? The one, hey, come over here, let's talk. Now they're true, what they're really about is, is coming out. They, they that led him, changing the goodwill, they bear him, they bear him a little before into what hatred? Because the foresaid speeches proceeded. So did he communicate these words? It said what? Foresaid speeches. All that we just read, he said that. He said those things. So they they got cut. They thought it proceeded as they thought, because of the because their evil eye, see, when our eye is evil toward our brother. We're going to see him in an evil light, even if he speaks the what? The truth. <laughs> From a what mind? They thought he was out of his mind. You bugging! You tripping! Now, y'all bugging. Y'all tripping. He's speaking soberly. See, but see how they flipped it? You bugging. Like, they thought this God, this dude's out of, he's lost his mind. He's speaking the truth of God. The treasure of wisdom. But what? The, the, a foolish man, a, a fool despises wisdom and instruction. We see it. But when he was ready to die with stripes, see, he's, willing, he's ready to suffer. For the Lord's sake, right? Just like Christ. Christ suffered, we gotta suffer. See? Eliezer knew that. He knew the prophecy in Isaiah. Israel had that. The sufferings of the Messiah. Well, I'm a suffer. He groaned and said, It is manifest unto the Lord that hath the holy knowledge 
that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being what? Beaten, tormented. But in soul and well what? Content. See, he got that inner joy because the treasures of what wisdom has been revealed to him. To suffer these things because I what? I fear God. I tremble at his word. I'm obedient. Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and it endures. It's not just the beginning, it's the duration to the end. And thus this man died having his death for an example of what? A noble courage, a memorial of what virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. See? That's why he set the tone for the rest of Israel when you read the next chapter, where you had a woman that in the span of one day saw one by one each of her sons get tormented, dismembered, tongues cut off, and she exhorted them to die. How many mothers in Israel would be willing to do that? We women may say they're virtuous. Okay. Most I put us to the test. We may say we're virtuous men. Most I put them trials on us. We want to talk proudly. Because if we bend the scriptures for son and daughter, son in law, daughter in law. Or you're going to exhort them to die manfully for the laws of God like the woman did in the next chapter. Come on now. If we turn a blind eye to sin with our sons and daughters, right? You're going to exhort them to die manfully for the laws of God like that woman did in the next chapter? If we agree and consent to foolishness, promote it. Turn a blind eye to it. Don't correct it, Right? Are we going to exhort to die manfully like the woman exhorted her son? Die manfully like the rest of your brethren? All right. So we'll end it there, right? So all praise to the Most High in Christ. Uh, you know what? Let's just finish Proverbs. I'm just going to read it through so we can move on. Uh, let me just finish Proverbs for a little quick. Because this is going to cap it off anyway. Proverbs 4 and 6. We'll read up to verse 13. Hmm. A little past that. Verse 6. Forsake her not, and she shall what? Did wisdom preserve Eliezer in his old age? Because he understood God gives what? Good doctrine. And the doctrine says, Forsake ye not my law. So what presentation of circumstances changes that? None. Not even if it's your what? The friend is thine own what? Soul. When he's turned to serve another God and not the Most High, he's not your friend no more. He's your enemy. Because Satan has taken hold of his heart. Now, that don't mean do evil. Point is... Don't go along. We're gonna read. Don't go along with it. So, what verse we at? Verse six. Six. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she will keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But with all thy getting, get what understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Because it would have been a dishonor. To do the foolishness when thou dost embrace her. So Eliezer embraced wisdom. She shall give to thine head an ornament of what? Grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Even though he's going to die, it's a, because he's going to find mercy in the day of his death. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. And thy years of thy life shall be what? How old was he? 96. 90? 90? Yeah. 8, 4 score and 10, right? I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not 
be what? Straightened. When thou runnest, thou shalt not what? Stumble. So the most I'm gonna enlarge our steps. We're gonna walk on solid ground. We're not gonna stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is that what? Eliezer understood that. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Remember his friends? And go not into the way of what? Evil. Who are the evil men in the case of Eliezer? These so-called friends. Yeah, these so-called friends. Say, hey, you know what? Come over here. Eat what you want that's lawful. Just pretend to the people. We'll pretend to the people that is the swine's flesh so we can get on with this feast. Yeah, do something like they did in Exodus 32. Get out of here, man. They did. Elias don't know what time it is. There's a lot of history running in his mind. Avoid it. Pass not by it. In other words, don't even go there. We, Eliezer wasn't trying to go there, right? A modified version of what they said. Now, he ain't got nothing to do with that. Turn from it and what? Pass away. Is that what Eliezer did? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he did. For they sleep not except they have done what? And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to what? Fall. That's the type of spirit that be in these worldly people that forsake the law of God. Be on guard against them, man. Even if it's your son or your daughter, your father-in-law, mother-in-law, son. Be careful. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of what? Violence. They, the, the man was tortured. But the path of the just is as the shining light. That shineth more and more unto the what? Perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they what? Stumble. They, man, they stumble and don't even see it, man. Because they're filled with the worldliness. All right, so we'll end it there. It's all praise to the most high Christ. So let's do the uh, prayer. Psalm 119, 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Through thy commandments. Though, uh, thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients. Because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yes, yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. All praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for these scriptures. For this understanding in the scriptures. We pray that you give us the spirit to continually endure in the keeping of your commandments and your word. We pray for the sick, for the infirm brothers and sisters among us, that your righteousness and your holiness and healing shines upon us. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this blessing be upon the 12 tribes of Israel scattered throughout the whole world. Amen. Amen. So we'll do the Lord's Communion. Uh, brothers and sisters on the uh, Facebook Live, if you'd like to do the uh, communion with us, feel free. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins.
The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that sitteth on the right hand of the Father, bless our bread and wine, which represents the body and blood of our Lord. This we do in remembrance of you until your second coming. Thank you, Father in Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Peace and blessings, everyone, on the Facebook Live. Most High in Christ bless you all. Thank you for fellowshipping with us, joining us on this Sabbath Bible study. All praises to the Most High in Christ. Stay strong. Continue to endure. Pray for one another. And that's all we have for today. All right, everyone. Most High in Christ bless you all. Stay strong. Peace and blessings.